Well, everybody, welcome to yet another stellar edition of Dr. C's Corner. I'm your host, Dr. Jeff Zarnick, Associate Dean, Department of Criminal Justice and the Social Sciences here at Southern New Hampshire University Global. And on behalf of your incredible faculty and your phenomenal advisors, welcome to yet another edition. I figured I'd wait till the, the term is in full swing, the dust has settled, and you're, you're in your courses, and you're comfortable and enjoying the material and doing all that you possibly can not to be distracted. We talk about distraction before. We talk about you know the drain on your cognitive capability. We talk about memory. But it's really important to keep that dialogue going in some fashion so you recognize what might be happening when you are not, say, succeeding to the, to the level that you want to be yet. You're not achieving your goals academically or even professionally because we deal in the world of words and recall and application of what we've learned. And we have to be very clear and articulate and find those right words so people understand us, especially in criminal justice where we can never be misunderstood, right? Okay, so that's why many of you, and if you're fully immersed in the program, you know it's a pretty writing intensive discipline because, well, Surprise, that's what we do, and your faculty and your, your advisors will back me up on this because we have to tell the whole truth, nothing about the truth. We have to be very clear so we can help people to the best of our abilities. And now some of the things that can actually impact, right, are things like you're seeing right here, okay? Look at that. Google effects on memory, cognitive consequences of having information at our fingertips. Interesting. What does that mean? Are we Googling too much? This is not meant to disparage Google. It's a wonderful search engine. It's great. Google Scholar, all these things that they have, the assets that has really supported a lot of us, students, teachers, and otherwise. But what they're saying in this article here, it can actually have a detrimental effect if we're not relying upon the development of our own long-term memory and working memory as well to retrieve facts that we should be hanging on to and not dismissing it or transferring that responsibility to a search engine, okay? So this short video is just a wake-up call to say, hmm, maybe I need to keep things in check so I can, can, I can maintain and develop a healthy memory, okay? Repetition does help, okay? Uh, multiple choice, true, false, things like those types of exams do hit the needle or push the button of recall. You, you may not have those answers at your fingertips. And it, what about essays? What about writing? What about the things you have to do where you actually have to apply your ideas? You get frustrated? Most students that I deal with, learners, get frustrated because they can't find the right words that they need in order to be clear, to be articulate, to get their point across so the reader, i.e. Your, your instructor, the county attorney, whomever, understands exactly what you're trying to say. So what happens to a lot of students, we've all done it, we rely on slang, conversational language, okay? We, we dismiss, you know, all those things that are required of us, especially in the grammatical sense, in the spelling sense, okay? Because at the end of the day, slang terms can mean a lot of things. Now, we know the English language has millions of words that have multiple meanings. We know that, and that's why if you have a strong long-term memory, okay, you can retrieve the exact words and put them in the right context and not have to rely upon slang or copy-paste from what someone else said because you can't find the words. So how do you develop that strong vocabulary? How do you develop that strong memory where you can actually articulate yourself well enough, which is a demand of our profession? So let's talk about memory for a minute. Do you use your phone to aid your memory? That's okay, okay? You do not have to replace it. And I'm pulling all of this, this stuff in from a wide variety of research that's out there, all right, that deals directly with memory, recall, articulation, all those different things, and your cognitive capabilities. So you can use your phone to aid your memory, but don't replace it. Don't over-delegate your responsibilities of your memory to technology. We erode our natural ability to hold on for in, to information if we rely on this thing too, too much. Okay, one study assessed people who visited a museum and viewed a painting. Quote, the people who photographed the painting remembered fewer details about it. 
compared to people who just looked at it without offloading the information to a digital resource, according to this researcher. Uh, we offload a lot of information instead of actively trying to keep the memory alive. That's, that's not good when you think about it. It's kind of a, a missed opportunity, a missed experience. When you think back at a wonderful time you had or a beautiful painting that you're looking at or something like that, and you can't really recall the details. That's surface learning, not in-depth, not appreciating what's in front of you. And that includes reading text. That includes reading research articles, all those things you have to bring in to your coursework, okay? You, 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 we have a tendency to cherry pick that information, cobble it together, hoping it makes sense. But what are we doing? We're doing a disservice to our own mind, which we have to keep active, especially as you age. You ever walk into a room and forget what you were going in there for, right? That knows no age uh, category, trust me. All right, so what he's saying is we practice using our memory less and less throughout the day. Okay, we're not using the normal cognitive tools to retain memory. And you need a strong memory in order to transfer what you know onto the page. Should we stop? Researcher asks, should we stop setting phone alerts to remind us of a meeting? No. Quote, our brains are having to process more salient information than ever before, the researcher by the name of Steroni says. As a result, we're using technology as an aid, and it's very helpful. But without it, we'd be overwhelmed. There's no question about it. We're taking on, taking on more information right now than ever before. Okay? The researcher adds, ah, she doesn't risk it. If she has important appointments, she has alerts on the phone, all right? Helps her keep organized. That's great. It's only a problem when we start relying on it too much. So, quote, if there is something non-essential that you could risk not putting on your phone, use that as an opportunity to practice holding on to that information. If we don't practice this talent, and it is, it will fade away. Not good. Think about that now. Reduce your information overload and exercise your mind simply focusing on something for longer boosts, for longer, boost your chance of remembering it. But that's harder. It's harder in this information overload, is it not? Okay, so limit the onslaught. In idle moments, put the phone down and exercise your memory. And when you have something to read, okay, reading is a calisthenic. A lot of us, we all go, oh, I have to read 15 pages, and I don't, okay, learn to read incrementally for it to become a sustained scholarly reader, okay? It's like lifting weights. You want to say, I want to bench 400 pounds. You're not going to start benching 350, right? You work your way through that. So you read two pages, and then you set a goal for three and four. Now what you're doing is you're really helping your brain focus. You're pulling in more vocabulary for recall, and you become a, sta a sustained reader and uh Students, learners, and other practitioners who practice sustained reading have a have a, a better method, a better opportunity, okay, and produce better results than those who don't. And that's research fact. So I know I kept you too long for this. If you have any questions at all, you want to read any of this research, let me know. I'll send it to you. And as always, we have your back here in the Department of Criminal Justice. Again, I'm Dr. C, ringing out on yet another Dr. C's Corner. Have a great and safe week.